This is Steve Robbins. Welcome to the Get It Done Guys, quick and dirty tips to work less and do more. College is expensive. You're paying $200 an hour to be there, and you use technology to help because you've used it since you were two and it's melded into your brain on a biochemical level. You are pretty much the Borg. But you know all that great tech that's supposed to make your mind superhuman? It actually doesn't. In fact, it makes you feel like a superhuman while your brain slowly atrophies and you end up at a disadvantage in both college and in the real world. So if you don't make sure to develop your brain the right way, you will miss opportunity, you'll fail over and over and die in a gutter smelling of cheap bourbon. Fortunately, however, you're listening to this podcast, and in just five minutes we'll change all of that so that you can tone down the technology and pump up the human achievement. Take intern MG. Please, take intern MG. MG is the practically perfect college student in almost every way. He checks his syllabi by smartphone, he takes notes on laptop, emails his assignments, and is sure that he's racking up perfect grades. He's headed for a 4.0 GPA as relentlessly as a convertible full of frat boys during spring break heads towards a case of natty light. Or so he thinks. Then, he gets his mid-semester report, and he got an A- in Perfectionism 101. While he's working through it with his therapist, let's you and I review what he did wrong. Despite his great habits at work, MG's tech works against him at school. In lectures, he half pays attention and he kind of half surfs the web, or his phone, or his watch, or his Fitbit. He raises his hand for class participation, but his comments often repeat someone else's or they're off topic entirely. To engage well at school, it's important to understand where technology isn't the best solution. Fortunately, he has me to enlighten him. I wish I were that lucky. I noticed in college that in-person learning from someone who understands the material, and that part really is important, helped me learn better. In-person learning includes subliminal cues like word choice, facial expressions, and reactions that seem to matter when learning. And of course, that makes sense since humans evolved to learn from each other. In fact, you learned language without knowing language to begin with. Think about that. If you have the chance to learn face-to-face from someone who really knows their stuff, take it and put your attention on the person who knows the material. That's the professor. The web, Facebook, and Instagram will still be there after class. Since computers replaced more efficient and effective ways of taking notes and learning, you will have to recall and relearn those more efficient, effective habits. And that requires tools. So grab yourself a paper notebook, a good pen, a good pencil, and a good eraser. Now, instead of taking notes on your computer, take them on paper. When you take notes on paper, you can also use all kinds of creative brain-enhancing techniques like mind mapping. There is a link in this episode's transcript to my episode on mind mapping. This episode's transcript also has a link to my episode on techniques you can use to take killer notes, like what do you actually put in your notes and what do you not. Next, choose anti-technology triggers. Train yourself to use your new tools. In a recent episode, I spoke about how creating triggers to help your mind kick bad habits and create good ones is in fact one of the best ways to change your behavior. So, set up triggers to establish an anti-tech habit. You can listen to my episode on how to divorce your computer for some of the finer points. MG decides that his anti-tech trigger will be putting on his shoes when he's leaving his dorm room to attend a lecture. By the way, did I mention that he's living in a castle this semester? He puts his shoes on when he's getting ready to leave his room in the castle where he lives. I guess he needs shoes because drawbridges have splinters. I'm so happy for him. He lives such a tough life. I'm not at all jealous. <laughs> it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. LOL. <laughs> From now on, when he puts his shoes on to leave for lecture, he sets his computer in a nook in his room and turns his phone off, not to silent or to vibrate, but to off. Then he takes his notebook, his pens, and his finely crafted 05 millimeter titanium pencil, and he puts those in his knapsack. To really drive it in, he spends a few minutes rehearsing these movements to actually get muscle memory to kick in so that when he puts on his shoes, he automatically turns off his tech and packs up his low-tech tools. He does this over and over until he thinks of the path to the lecture hall as a mystical veil between the worlds, where high-tech distracting gadgets cannot pass. Identify your triggers for shelving your tech. If you can't always leave your laptop at home because you need it for your extracurricular robot battle competition that is going to form the foundation of your killer robot army ten years from now, still, Choose a trigger so you know when it is time to put it away. Maybe when you put your laptop into your backpack before lecture, boom, that's when you know it's time. Instead of just closing the cover of the laptop, you shut it down entirely and you don't turn it on in class. Or the trigger could be the classroom door. As part of entering and sitting down, off goes the high tech and out comes the low tech. 
Ask your friends for help. Give them leverage. They have permission to publicly share the screen captures of last week's Snapchat. Since your mother might also be listening to this podcast, I will graciously not discuss what Snapchat is or why you might not want that screen capture to show up on the front page of the school's website. Hi, Mom. Use offline research in addition to online. Not only does high-tech derail your note-taking, but doing research purely online is limiting. People are actually an amazing source of knowledge. They know things, and sometimes they don't put those things online. You might think that web surfing is broadening your horizons. Okay, it is. Sort of. It exposes you to millions of viewpoints of millions of people, but they may be complete hacks. At college, however, you're spending $200 an hour for people who have known expertise. Use it. Yes, start with online research, but then go beyond. Really think about the material, cogitate and come up with really good questions to ask your professor. Then grab some office hours and strike up a conversation. You'll learn better, you'll establish a relationship with another human being, and you'll take advantage of the chance to learn beyond what you could get from Google. To get the most out of your college experience, the best rule of thumb is to engage with your professor, not the internet. Adopt low-tech tools and establish triggers so you know when to use them. Be present in class so you can come up with good questions about the class material. Yes, find some answers online and use office hours for advanced concepts and relationship building. In a future episode, we'll delve into some more tips about how you can get the most out of college without becoming the victim of technology. This is Steve Robbins. Follow Get It Done Guy on Twitter and Facebook. I run webinars and other programs to help people be extraordinarily productive and build extraordinary careers. If you want to know more, Visit steverrobbins.com, that's S-T-E-V-E-R-R-O-B-B-I-N-S dot com, or text Get It Done to 33444. Then you give your email address to get signed up to my mailing list, and you get a free copy of the hidden chapter of my book on how to build relationships that can accelerate your career success. That's Get It Done, texted to 33444. Work less, do more, and have a great life. <laughs>